Do you need new batteries for your boat and you're not sure if you should stick with the traditional lead acid battery, maybe an AGM battery, or if it's a good time for you to jump over to lithium batteries? We're gonna talk through the three different chemistries, kind of go back to the basics a little bit, talk you through the pros and cons of each ones, and maybe why lithium is a good idea for you. Let's start with the three different types of batteries. So you've got a traditional flooded lead acid battery, you have an AGM battery, an absorbent glass mat battery, or a lithium battery. Typically, they're lithium iron phosphate or LIFE PO4 batteries. Now, the lead acid batteries you're familiar with. They pretty much came in everything at one point or another. They're heavy. Um, they are kind of finicky when it comes to extreme weather conditions or deep discharges. They're fairly low cost, but and, and they generally work pretty well. But you know over time, they degrade and eventually you just need to go ahead and replace them because over time they, they wear out and they're just not really uh, what they used to be, right? So the lead acid batteries are 12.6 volt batteries and one of the biggest challenges with them is they're not very efficient. So when you talk about a battery, we're gonna talk about its availability to discharge energy, which is measured in amp hours. When you look at a lead acid battery, like a group 27 or a group 31, Typically, they're in the 100, and 100 to 105 amp hour range. Now, you can go look up a lithium battery and you'll find 100 amp hours as well, but one of the key differences is the effective discharge capacity of a lead acid battery is only about 50%. So let's just use a 100 amp hour example. If you had a lead acid battery that's 100 amp hours, you're only going to be able to use, or your usable energy, 50 amp hours, half of it. You gotta cut it in half which means you're carrying around 100 amp hours worth of energy, but you're only getting to use 50. That's not ideal, right? The other challenge with the lead acid battery is the weight. So the weight, uh, one of those deep cycle group 27, group 31 batteries is definitely pushing 50 pounds, right? You may even have like three or four of them in your boat. It's pretty easy to get 200 pounds worth of batteries in the back of a boat. The, the lithium batteries for the same exact energy so if I compare a, a group 27 lead acid battery that's 50 pounds and 50 amp hours to a lithium battery that's 50 amp hours, it's gonna be in the like that's the 15 pound range for the lithium versus like a 50 pound range for a lead acid. It's a huge difference there in the, in the weight. Uh, sometimes that's good or bad, depending on the performance of your boat and how it's set up. Sometimes you do have to adjust your jack plate to compensate when you convert to lithiums, but a redistribute weight is really a good way to go as well. But Weight is a big deal. Another thing to consider on lead acid and AGM batteries is their discharge curve. Now the discharge curve on either one of these batteries is very linear. It's pretty much just a linear decrease in voltage over time. As you add load to it, it drops off, right? So at the beginning of the day, you may turn your electronics on, you're at like 12.5, 12.4 volts. Uh, two hours in, you're at like 12.1. Four hours in, you're at like 11.8 they're just gonna to continue to decline throughout the day till you get low enough to where it's time to recharge it. Um, so for, from a performance standpoint, that could be a detriment when you get under 12 volts, and that's not hard to do with like a lead acid battery. Cycle life is another big part of it. The ability to cycle a battery, the best way I can explain it would probably be like exercising, right? So let's just say I have a single step. I can go up and down that single step hundreds of times and probably uh, maybe I'll, I'll break a sweat at a hundred times, but I could do it a lot, right? Without really stressing myself. Now that would be like a short discharge. Like you're taking out your battery, you're using it for a little bit and bringing it right back up. That's a short cycle. Where lead acids really fall off is when you start to get into deeper discharges. And that 50% is like sprinting up a couple flights of stairs for a lead acid battery. It's pretty hard on it. And anything below 50% of depth of discharge is like, gosh, it's like running a half marathon on the battery. It's really, really hard on a lead acid or even an AGM battery to get below that like 50 or 40% state of charge. They don't really come back well. So if you've ever experienced where it's like, hey, my battery's good. Uh, you know, I left my key on or whatever and I killed my battery and it's just never been the same. Like it's, it, just, it just doesn't last nearly as long, that's, that's why. Like they're not good at deep discharges. That's why you really need to keep it at that 50% and you carry around all that extra weight. 
Now, charging a lead-acid battery is, is there's really nothing fancy to it. Everybody's got a charger. Every outboard works with it. That's the same for an AGM or a lead-acid battery. They're easy to charge. So that's kind of the lead-acid battery. The AGMs are a little bit better, uh, more so in the depth of discharge. You can get, instead of like stopping at 50%, usually you can get them down to like 60% with less life loss or memory loss. But uh, the cycle life is better on an AGM battery. So lead acid, you're looking at like 250-ish cycles. A AGM battery, 300 to maybe 500, somewhere in that range. It all depends on the weather and how deep you discharge it. So we'll just use broad ranges for now. And the AGM battery is a bit more expensive. It's going to be, uh, you know, definitely any more right up there bumping on reasonable lithium prices, uh, depending on who you're looking at. But the AGMs are pretty much very similar to the lead acid. It's just a little bit better cycle life and ability to take them to a deeper discharge. Now let's talk about lithium. I've got a lithium right here. This is a lead time dual purpose battery. And I run a lot of lithium batteries if you've been on this channel at all. And I'm obviously a big fan of that. So let's talk through how I feel that might be a good fit for you. The first thing you'll notice is the weight. We talked about that. The weight is substantial. Uh, it's a substantial improvement. So let's just say I can go buy a group 27 uh, lead acid battery. It's 50 pounds. And I can go and get 50 amp hours out of it. I can go buy a group 27 125 amp hour battery and get 125 amp hours out of it. I get it all for like 25 pounds. I don't have the weight off the top of my head. I actually tested that battery somewhere power queen group 27 it's up here on my wall my little capacity call out hopefully maybe you can see that group 27 power queen it tested at 108 percent of its rated capacity which means whatever the math is on that i took a 125 amp hour battery and got 108 percent out of it that's really what you're getting you're getting a ton a ton a ton of power out of it for the same amount of volume space and a lot less weight like it's a win-win-win, right, when it comes to that. We talked about weight. We talked about, um, let's talk about cycle life. Huge improvement. Lithium batteries, you like take with you to your next boat. Like that's kind of a crazy thing to think about. So if you buy lithiums and you run them for three years and you want to go upgrade boats, it's totally reasonable to just take them with you. You'll see people post their boat for sale. It's like batteries not included because they're going to take them with them. And that's for you to figure out what you want to do. I bought you know, seven year life batteries, 10 year life batteries, whatever. Uh, it's an investment that stays with you. It's not like a lead acid where it's like, ooh, two years, three years, I'm really, I, I need to go get new batteries, right? That gets old and uh, it is nice to kind of set it and forget it about the lithiums. That's definitely a benefit. Talk about cycle life, talk about weight. Uh, let's talk about the discharge curve. Have you ever used a drill, you know, one of these guys, and you're using it, you're using it, and it just stops, dead, Boop, do, nothing. That's by intent, and that's how the lithiums work. Like, they give you all the power until the BMS says no more. And what's good about that is you get, like, peak performance. You get high voltage, you get good output all up until the very end. So that 125 amp hour battery example I gave you, so you're going to get nice, good, strong power, higher voltage, you know, 13 volts, 12.9 volts up until the very end of its, its capacity. You don't have that slow degrading voltage throughout the day. It's really, really flat. Um, so that is nice, definitely from an electronic standpoint. It's really not hard to buy a 12 volt lithium battery and stay in the 13 volt range all day long with like three or four graphs running on your boat. Especially for like this guy, this 165 amp hour group 31 dual purpose battery. This thing is, it's a badass battery. And, um, You'll definitely run all your electronics on this guy. Uh, we're just kind of wrapping up some testing with it, but it is, it's is—it's been awesome. I also have the 140 amp hour, and it's, it's also awesome. Um, anyway, geeking out on batteries. We talked about that, but I did talk about the BMS like cutting off. So let's talk about what is a BMS on a lithium battery. Maybe in the back of your head you're thinking, like, oh, lithiums catch on fire. I saw it on the internet. Maybe true. Uh, that does happen. However, usually some conditions exist. One, they're physically damaged. You poke a hole in an e-cigarette or whatever, or you abuse it, or the charger's not right for it. And what happens, like on the internet, I've seen it, right? The guy plugs in his 
his cheap e-bike in the corner of his garage and leaves it plugged in for days on end and it catches fire. That's a different chemistry battery. That is not a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. It's probably an NMC battery. There's a bunch of different types of lithium ion batteries out there. And the ones that we use on our boats are L uh, LFP, lithium iron phosphate, and they're a very, very stable chemistry battery. Like they don't really want to thermally run away like the Tesla batteries, uh, the NMC cells and things like that. They're very, very stable. Now, could they catch on fire? Sure. And if they catch on fire is a problem, absolutely. However, the likelihood of that is extremely low. I've got like 15 kilowatts, kilowatt hours of batteries in the corner of my garage. I don't worry about it because they're all just sitting there chilling, doing their thing. Anyway, uh, the, the BMS handles a couple different things. One, it keeps the cells all in check. And there's four cells in there, 3.2 volts a piece, usually on a 12 volt battery. And what the BMS is doing is making sure they're balanced. Right? You think of like you're pouring water into four different cups, you want to bring them up evenly and that's balancing the cells because your battery is only as good as the, the lowest cell when it comes to performance. So it does its best to, to balance those as it recharges. It also protects it from like over discharging, uh, low voltage, that's why it cuts off when it hits low voltage. Over voltage, if something goes screwy, you hook it up weird. Short circuit protection, if you accidentally arc it across with your wrench or whatever, it'll cut itself off and like keep your wrench from turning red, which is a good thing. Um, so the BMS is a good guy. It also has things like uh, Bluetooth capability, which is awesome. I can pull up my phone and check this, the SOC of this battery, see what it's doing. I can turn it off if I wanted to. And it gives you an extra a bit of knowledge of what's going on with the battery, which is really nice. And some, like the Rodoto, here's the Rodoto, Group 27 cranking battery has a battery on it, or a button on it. And the button is for your cranking battery side of it. It's like an emergency start feature. Like, good luck finding that in a lead acid battery. Lead acid batteries are dumb, right? They're just going to do whatever they're told. Whatever you hook up to it, you leave your key on, it's going to be flat out dead. If I run that Rodoto dual purpose battery in my boat and I leave my key on, it'll run all the way down to 25% and then shut itself off until I hit the button. That's super nice. So like you could get to the lake that morning, go, oh damn, I didn't charge my boat, hit the button, fire it up and go make a big run around the lake, charge it up a little bit. Like it gives you a second chance at your day, which is, which is really, really nice. From a cost standpoint, yes, lithiums can be more expensive. There's a very wide range of cost. I have used lithiums that are $100 for 100 amp hours and I've used them that are $500 for 100 amp hours. And from there's a couple things I wanna talk about. One would be, in general, I would say they're all gonna perform equally. All things good, the $100, 100 amp hour lithium battery will do everything that the $500 one will. The major difference is gonna be maybe your reliability, maybe it's cheaper put together, not as well made, not as waterproof, it gets condensation in it. Um, versus the expensive one, but they're in, in great conditions, they all perform the exact same. The other big thing is customer service is gonna vary substantially. If you've looked on the internet, Amazon, whatever, there's like every white labeled battery on the planet has a different sticker on it, and it's really hard to tell like who's a player and who's not a player. I typically talk about ones that have a media presence, have some level of customer service, lead time, Rodoto, Power Queen, they will, in general, have pretty good support, depending on your expectations. Okay, so the super cheap lithiums, I don't really recommend, because I think that the support is gonna be non-existent. You're on your own. There's a good chance it'll work fine, but roll the dice, you're probably on your own. The, mid the mid-level ones, like the lead times, Power Queens, Rodotos, um, You'll, you, you'll have to email them. There's no dealer network. There's no phone number. You'll have to email them. They'll probably be based out of China. Next day, they'll email you back. They will have you work through some tests. They want you to discharge it. They want you to charge it. They're going to help walk you through what they need to warranty your battery. And some people don't want to deal with that, and they complain. That's kind of what comes with buying a battery that's a third of the price of an XYZ super high dollar battery. Now, then you've got the higher tier ones. Like I said, they'll probably perform the same, but the customer service will be very different. I can go buy uh, whatever, an Ionic battery and find a dealer in the Dallas area and go have them look at it for me as a local dealer. That's, that is nice. That may be what you want. You don't want to deal with it. Drop it off, let them worry about it. That's a thing, but you're going to pay for that. 
That's all what you're looking for. So are lithiums expensive? They can be, they don't have to be. And I, I did write down some prices. So let's just assume a group 27 lead acid battery is about $150 at Walmart. That may be even low right now. 50 amp hours of usable energy, right? We talked about that. Uh, a lead time basic 50 amp hour lithium is $150. A 100 amp hour basic lead time is $210. So I can get double the energy for another $60 over a lead acid. And it'll last a lot longer. I mean, it's a no brainer for me. I don't know if it is for you, but it is for me. So hopefully that helped walk you through some of this. Um, I think it's really important to understand kind of the fundamentals. I know sometimes I get maybe go too far on that on the channel. If you found it helpful, if you learned something in this video, I'd appreciate it if you comment down below, subscribe to the channel so you see more stuff like this. And uh, be sure to check out this next video for you because you might learn something there too.